Modern retro classics are very popular at the moment and this is the latest offering from Kawasaki. This is the Z900 RS. This is based on basically Kawasaki's 70s Z1 motorcycle. Very similar lines and design to that original Z1. Looks absolutely amazing. Uses the Z motor out of the Z900, the four cylinder 16 valve inline four engine. This was very kindly lent to me by Wheels Motorcycles, links below. This is their demonstrator. I'm gonna take this out for a little bit of a spin. I've had this for the last week. I've done a few miles on this bike. I absolutely love it. It looks amazing, doesn't it? The attention to detail, the finish on this bike is incredible, is incredible. So without further ado, let's jump on board and Chopsy, Roll the intro. So jumping aboard, first thing you notice is this beautiful gauges you're, you're faced with you know proper analog gauges i do have a soft spot for proper analog rev counters not so much speedos but together these two give that that feel that retro feel you've then got a little lcd in the middle showing things like your fuel gauge your engine temperature your outside air temperature and your gear indicator so you've got some of those modern luxuries but in an old-fashioned classic style gauge pod oh love that powering her up that sounds fruity, doesn't it? Completely Euro 5, this bike. They've made, Kawasaki have made a bike which sounds decent stock. That's just got me interested uh, from the off. Jumping aboard, it's got a lovely feel to it. The suspension is plush. The seat is so comfortable. The bars are nice and high and wide. The, you know, that your feet are at like you're, you're a really comfortable angle where your your heels are sort of forward a little bit from your hips so you feel like you just sat nicely in a nice comfortable armchair it's a nice place to be this a really nice place to be give it a bit of welly and that motor really starts to sing i love the sound of this they've Kozaki have got the sound of this beautiful a lovely induction roar and actually some volume out of the exhaust as well so beautiful exhaust noise no quick shifter and blipper of course this is all very manual this is all very retro so you've got to change gear manually but that just adds to the uh, the whole engagement of the ride really it's nice to ride a bike, like I say, it's back to basics a little bit, you know. This has got traction control, this has got two levels of traction control. Obviously, it's got ABS, you know, that's a legal requirement. But that's it, you know, there's no quick shifter and blipper, there's no rider modes. It's all just very simple, it's all very just jump on, put fuel in it and ride it. You haven't got to think, well, am I in the right mode? Am I doing this correctly? Do I need to swap this, adjust this suspension slightly? No. Just get on it, ride it. The suspension is KYB. The forks are fully adjustable, upside down forks, but the rear shock looks like it's just adjustable for preload and damping. So not full adjustment on the back, but just damping. But you know, this bike isn't about pushing it in the corners and going very quickly. I think it can do that, and we'll find out in a minute when we put it through some twisties, but the suspension is set up you know on the soft side on the comfortable side actually the engine makes you the sound of the engine makes you want to push it on and, and get a bit of a lick on actually but i'm not sure the suspension can cope with too much of that <laughs> it's definitely more tuned to be comfortable you can still go reasonably quick but you're not going to be going out and probably getting your knee down and you know this isn't the point of this bike this is not the point of this motorcycle so as I mentioned, the engine is a 948cc inline four, you know, the Z900 engine, the same which is in the Kawasaki, you know, Z900 naked. It's been tuned slightly differently. 
It's been tuned for a bit more torque. This has got 98 Newton meters of torque and 111 brake horsepower. So it's down a little bit on power because they've retuned it to make it more of a torquey ride and taken a little bit away from the top end on this because, you know, as I say, this isn't about being a top end screamer. It's more about having torque, making it easy to ride. And it's got a decent amount of grunt. The performance of this, it's fast. If you do rev it out, it's fast and we'll give it a little bit of beanage in a minute. Let's have a get past this guy. Done the Tesco's man. The brakes are Kawasaki branded brakes. I don't know what the brakes are, who they're actually made by, or if they are Kawasaki, but they're okay, you know, they're not gonna fire you over the handlebars. But they've got you know, a decent amount of initial bite, enough power without thinking, can I stop? You know perfectly acceptable if we do push it on a little bit around the around the twisties you know it wouldn't be a wouldn't be a chops review without a little bit of a, a handling test it's uh, yeah you could get a reasonable lick on but you can't go very very quickly you can scratch that itch on performance if you want it's definitely not as focused around the twisties as like the triumph Thruxton RS, that is definitely the RS, I think the RS Triumph range is definitely a bit more on the sporty side from a suspension point of view. Oh look, look what we got behind here, bloody tractor. But that doesn't matter because I'm completely happy just to poodle on this, enjoy the scenery a little bit <laughs> and be comfortable. This seat it's so so comfortable i find this whole riding position so so comfortable thank you sir the only there is a slight fly in the ointment though which is a little bit of a, a disappointment with this bike and that is the throttle the throttle is very on and off it's very snatchy and uh, i'm really quite surprised it's like that now, not many modern bikes now have snatchy throttles. That was something you had sort of three or four years ago. There used to be issues with bikes struggling to meet emissions and, and give a nice smooth feeling throttle. This is a bit on off and it detracts from that lovely ride a little bit. So it's a bit of a shame. If I bought this bike, I couldn't put up with that throttle. I think I'd have to then go and get it remapped or a power commander and then you're probably into changing the exhaust if you're doing that maybe and then you, you, there's no need to do that it's such a shame that that throttle is just too it's like too aggressive you have to really finesse it to make it smooth and that's not what this bike is about i don't want to have to concentrate on being really smooth with the throttle i just want the bike to ride effortless everything else is effortless about it but that throttle is requires some finessing to get it smooth otherwise you're just dropping on and off you can see it and that is me being pretty smooth at the throttle it's a shame I'd al almost wish it did have some rider modes because I could go into a softer mat a softer throttle mat but because it's very basic has no rider modes that's it you're stuck with that so you're gonna have to probably get a power commander for two or three hundred quid there may be a, a map available to correct the fueling to make the throttle response nicer but there may be other ways to fix it a fuel dongle to give a bit more fuel in the lower rev range i don't know if you've got one of these and you fix this snatchy throttle let me know in the comments how you've done it because it's a real shame and that is the only thing about this bike which would actually stop me buying one because apart from that it is lovely absolutely lovely but they've just the throttle the throttle response does ruin it careful now this is this is a 12 mile hour corner obviously jeez <laughs> it does get a little bit bouncy the suspension does get a little bit bouncy you've got to be a little bit careful i think the engine's so sporty sounding, it does make you want to open it up a little bit and I think you could get, you could get yourself in a little bit of trouble with that suspension. You could get yourself up to speed and, and, and be at a speed where the suspension quite can't quite cope. So uh, yeah, it might be one of those bikes worth, it's worth twiddling with the twiddlies. Okay, let's give it a little bit of a push on. 
rear brakes best to adjust speed because it unsettles the suspension a little bit if you go too hard on the front. So use the rear brake to, to set your corner speed. A reasonable amount of torque, you know, it's not a, a rear brake again there. It's not a, it's not a, you know, it's not a, a twin, so you've not got that masses of mid-range. Morning, someone else is out for the same, uh, same idea as me, making the most of the sunshine. So it's not got masses of torque being a straight four, but because it's retuned, it's got enough. So about 4,000 revs, it starts to come in. It's quick enough to uh, get your kicks out of it. It's quite surprising when you look down at the speedo and you see how fast you're actually going. It feels like you're going slower than you actually are. But ultimately, I think the suspension and perhaps the chassis as well. Perhaps there's a little bit of flex in the chassis. Ultimate performance. That is going to hamper you slightly, but that's not what this bike is about, is it? It's got enough. The important thing is it's got enough performance there to give you those kicks when you do want to go a little bit faster. I'm not even going to take this up the hill climb road because it's not it's not that sort of bike so we're going to miss the hill climb and we're going to take it into town instead because i think this is where really this bike is probably going to spend most of its time this is more of a cruising between cafes sort of bike which is no bad thing and that's sort of the type of riding i find myself wanting to do you know going out for the day going to the calf you know going out for a ride with your mates just in a just Riding a bike which is just very, very comfortable, looks amazing, you feel cool on it because it's got that retro, retro feel to it and just sort of doing on a, a calf run, coffees, different calves and getting coffees at different calves, yeah, that is, that could be me, I'm nearly 50, perhaps that's what I should be doing, forget track days, <laughs> forget 250 horsepower motorcycles, get something like this and just go on calf runs and cake runs. It does appeal. This sort of retro classic does appeal. Now I am getting a little bit older, perhaps a little bit more sensible, you know, perhaps Super Dukes and Street Fighters and Dragsters and, and H2s are not in my future. Perhaps I need to get myself a nice little retro classic. And what I do like about this sort of bike is of course you could heavily modify them so you know this i think these sorts of bikes are the are the ones which really you know i know i love to modify bikes these are probably the sorts of bikes you can do the most with you know and, and do all sorts of structural changes not just bolt-ons and carbon bits but you can do structural changes to these to make something truly unique so yeah i, I could see myself getting into this okay Enough of that waffle about being sensible. What's it like? A bit of throttle. Oh, you're going to pull out. No thanks. First gear. Wheel comes up. Oh, well that's straight up to 60 plus. No problem at all. So it's quick. You know, first gear, the wheel's up. It's got traction control, obviously. So that keeps you all in check and it's a far you know that is really fast enough you do not need to go any faster than that on the road says the man with the 250 horsepower motorcycle hmm. so there she is the z900 rs looks really lovely doesn't it i love the exhaust design looks like it's got I mean, you wouldn't need to change the exhaust on it i mean it looks absolutely lovely full led headlights the best thing about it is the paint finish, the quality, like the pinstriping. It's got the raised Kawasaki, you know, real classic raised Kawasaki metal badging on the tank. This one's got the silver and the white pinstriping on it. The finish on the tank, the paint finish, is very, very good. That detailing continues into the rear with the pinstriping and the colours and that lovely gloss deep black finish. Beautiful. LED tail light as well funky looking full led indicators 
looks decent from the back as well. One of the things which really catches your eye is of course that exhaust, that beautiful chrome. When it, it, uh, is it chromed or is it just a stainless steel finish? Even the cap is hidden away nicely, so you can't really see the cap within that system. And so you wouldn't have to change that exhaust. It sounds nice, it looks nice. It's nice to see a standard bike with a nice exhaust system on it at the factory. I also really like the engine finish. It's got sort of cooling fins to make it look a little bit more retro and it's got a nice sort of black satin finish. Reminds me of a little bit like the old RD 250s and stuff, the old Yamahas with the black satin engine finish. Little aluminium finishing pieces just under the tank there. And then the badging is also very retro with metal badges sort of stuck on. Really retro finish to the badges. I really like that. The other thing I love with this is this diamond cut wheels they've got. So you've got black wheels, but then they've polished and done a diamond cut on, the, on all the edges of the spokes and stuff. And again, that gives a, a real retro look and a real bit of quality to the finish. I mean, look, look at that front and back. They've got these lovely diamond cut edges to all of the wheels and stuff. Very nice. Let's have a closer look at those clocks and turn it on. The old sweep of the clocks. And then in the middle, you've got that little LCD with the fuel, bike temperature, the gear indicator, etc. So everything you need there. And just uh, lovely quality. I do love an analog clock. Ooh, I love it. The quality of the switch gear is also very nice. Very tactile buttons, which look good quality, and they've got a nice feel to them when you actually push them. No discomfort riding this bike. Very, very nice seat. I mean, that is a classic 70s motorcycle seat, isn't it? It is just comfortable, lovely. You've got three, four inches of padding, four inches of padding for your ass. If you get a sore ass on this bike, you're really a lost cause. So there we go, the Z900 RS, I think you will agree, a beautiful looking machine. So the Z900 RS, I love it. I absolutely love the look of it, the finish of it, how you feel riding it, you feel cool. It looks cool in this black as well. It looks really nice. The paint finish is exceptional. I mean, it, it's for a Japanese motorcycle, the quality of this, it feels like a European bike. It is very, very nice. The whole, I can't pick any faults with the bike apart from that throttle. They've nailed everything about it. And then they've not spent enough time on the mapping getting that throttle nice. I don't know why it's so bad. And it is pretty bad. You know, it's as by, it's like the old, sort of MT-09s, you know, the, the, the very early bikes when UI4 first came in and manufacturers really struggled to get them smooth. It feels like that. It's, it, you'd have to address it. And that is a bit of a shame. That is a bit of a shame. I mean, you could get used to it, I suppose. But for me, it does just ruin the ride a little bit. But I mean, it's a couple of hundred quid, I guess, to fix. And then the whole bike, apart from that, it's lovely absolutely lovely and it's something i could see myself owning it's fast enough it handles well enough i love the sort of classic styling to it it's very nice all the switch gear is also a really high quality there's nothing looking at the bike where you go oh that's a bit suspect quality and it's a ten and a half thousand pound bike so you know it's a reasonable reasonably decent price ten and a half grand from a weight perspective, she weighs 214 kilos wet. So again, average, you know, not, not excessively heavy, not excessively light, an average reasonable weight. <laughs> I wish I could say the same. The gearbox is quite slow. It's quite a long throw between gears. So it's not, not the fastest change, but it's a beautifully smooth, you can find neutral, you know, all the gears, it, it, the clutch is light. It's a cable clutch, but it's light. You know, it goes into gear, very precise feeling gearbox, but if not a little bit sort of slow to change, but that's fine. Adds to that retro feel. On the motorway, let's get her up to 70 miles an hour. That is 70, 4,000 revs at 70. So absolutely 
you could cruise at 90, no problem at all. Obviously, it's completely naked, so you get a bit of wind. You're quite upright as well, so you're not even cantered forward slightly, so you've got full-on wind blast, but I don't find it too bad. But, you know, as long as you don't go over 80, I don't find it too bad. You could actually perhaps drop a tooth on the front sprocket or add a couple of teeth to the rear sprocket to liven up that mid-range even more, maybe, because you've certainly got the cruising ability still. Something to think about. But this sort of riding, as you get older, or maybe you don't, it doesn't have to be an age thing, I don't know, but certainly as I'm getting older, I'm finding myself more attracted to this sort of machine. It, now these modern bikes with all the electronic, this, that and the other, they're all very well, but it is quite refreshing when you go back to something like this, which is as basic as it can be really, you know, in, in 2021. As basic as you can go, and uh, yeah, it's nice. It's nice just to ride it without thinking modes, settings, buttons, you know. Just ride the damn thing. So massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this and getting to try this. I now want to try the Z900 Naked. This engine is a real peach actually, and I'd like to try it in a more sort of performance chassis rather than the retro sh chassis to see how good it is. So I'll try and get my hands on the, the standard Z900. Now a lot of people have asked me to try that bike, so I'll see if Wheels have got a demo. So massive thanks to Wheels. Check them out below. This is their demonstrator. So if you want to ride this exact bike, book in a test ride, get it ridden. Let me know what you think. Also, Wheels will do national delivery. So I know they've got two, two dealers, but they do national delivery. They also offer a lifetime warranty on their bikes. So they're a really fantastic dealer. So check them out in the links below. Show them a bit of love. They've also got a very, very good calf as well. <laughs> so worth a little trip up there if you're not based based in the area but there we go thanks for watching as always and i will see you on the next video cheers guys this is power level one which is full power <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to this.